Hey everyone, so just wanted to give everybody an update. I am finished with my seventh quarter of nursing school. Um, what a relief. <laughs> um, I'm going into quarter eight, which is for my program, it's the last quarter. Um, I will be done in September, so the end is finally in sight. Um, quarter seven was very rough and I'm thankful I'm done. I'm done with exams. I have never needed this two-week break more than I have now. Um, quarter seven was emotionally, mentally, physically, it was just draining. Um, and it was by far definitely the roughest, just, you know, family things going on, um, things with good friends that were happening, um, school, it was just very, very stressful and very um, draining in general. So it's nice to have that done and behind me and to have passed my final exams. Um, that's just really stress relieving. It just it feels like a weight is lifted off my shoulders. Um, so in this video, I really wanted to just kind of update you guys. Um, and then I'm also going to sh tell you guys how I study for exams, how I studied for these finals. Um, and as well as how I'm studying this break because if you're in nursing school you know and if you're not you soon will know that there's no rest for the weary <laughs> you're studying it doesn't stop um, so to start off finals I really um, just studied kind of my notes from throughout the quarter for both of my finals, they were both comprehensive, so there wasn't really um, specific stuff like we had to focus on. So for um, both my mother baby and my med or med surge or nursing two class, I kind of just for each exam that we took throughout the quarter, I made my own um, study guides, and so for the final I took those study guides that I'd already previously made because as I go through each chapter I make out um, in-depth notes I take notes I put them in a PowerPoint and I just add and then at the end when I'm going to study for that exam I print them off and that's what I use to study um, I have also had friends who have done study guides for us as well similar to that fashion and have uploaded them um, to our class to study um, just for helpful and so then I pull some of their information that maybe I didn't include or that I think might be helpful um, so I use those to study for finals and then I also take all of that and then I take our ATI books and the questions in the back of our textbooks and I answer those um, just to kind of refresh myself if I'm going through and I'm finding that there's a topic that I'm really kind of still loose on and not fully comprehending, um, I go in the book and I read that section until I feel like I have a good understanding. And that could be just reading that section and being like, oh, that makes sense. Or that could be reading that section, taking notes, um, maybe answering questions or looking up YouTube videos or searching on the internet things um, like study aids to remember diff different things by. And I have my notes right here actually sorry um let me just pull these out for you so for med search for example we'll do this one um first of all keep them all in a binder I have all my notes from the quarter in this binder um but so here's the study guide, because I just flipped right to it. Here's the study guide I have for um, the final. I'll take it out. I keep them in plastic sleeves just because I really would laminate them, except for the fact that I don't have time or money for that. So anyhow, these are my Nursing 2 final exam study guides. One is mine, and then one is one that a friend posted that I kind of went through, read, I highlighted stuff, I took notes um, on the side of it of things that I thought were important um, 
And then I really just use both of these, and I read off both, even though a lot of it's repetitive information. But when you're studying, I find that you can't ever repeat too much, if that makes sense. Um, so I went through and just, you know, highlighted and took notes on the different parts of it. Um, I did overall categories, so like the top thing here is hyperthyroidism. I put Graves disease. Um, I put what hyperthyroidism is, and I said thyroid hormones are um, extremely elevated, T3 and T4. The thyroid gland is enlarged with cardiac palpitations, fatigue, excess perspiration, heat intolerance, weight loss without loss of appetite, protruding eyes, neck goiter, and anxiety. So those are common characteristics and things that are identifiable by it. And then I list listed... Well, just a couple nursing interventions, you know, as much as you need. Um, they need six meals per day. Daily weights is the best um, form of nursing intervention for them. Nutritional status is a major concern. They need 4,000 to 6,000 calories per day or more to meet metabolic needs. So I just took notes like that and typed them out as I was going through on each individual topic. Now for this class, she did kind of, oh, here, see, here's a little helpful thing I found for Parkinson's disease just to help me remember it. Um, for this class though she did give us kind of like an outline to study for finals but she didn't really tell us like this is the information you're going to need to know etc. Um, so I studied that and then I studied more because I didn't really take that for gold. Um, so then this one it's very similar. This is the one that someone else did in our class, but it's very all-encompassing, and I was going through, and for the most part, a lot of this information was correct. And that's the other thing I just want to caution you, is if you do use somebody else's study guide for studying, make sure you go through the information and you double-check and make sure that it's correct, because you don't want to be studying something and studying it incorrectly and get to the test and you get those questions wrong or something. Um, really know the information, and if you don't know or you're iffy about it, look it up. Don't just take it for its word. Um, that's one thing I would suggest if you're not going to do your own study guide, you're going to use somebody else's. Um, sometimes it is time consuming to do your own study guide. I get that. It takes a lot of time. But if you're going to not do it and you're going to just take somebody else's study guide that they're giving you, make sure the information is correct because you never know what maybe they heard or thought they heard and then there's a question on the exam and you get it wrong because you thought it was what the the other person said it was. Does that make sense? Like, just really know the information and go through the thing. Um, I went through it with a fine tooth comb and then I highlighted the important information that I found in here so that as I was studying I could go through and read it. But this one's broken down into um, the modules. So they broke it down into the modules and what we covered in that module. So for module one, it goes into IBS, irritable bowel disease, peptic ulcer disease, ulcerative critical colitis, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, it just has everything. And then it goes into uh, module two, what we discussed in module two, module three, the topics we discussed, and it basically just has what we discussed. So, for example, that one's kind of all this to me. Okay, so appendicitis. So it has appendicitis, and then here it has signs and symptoms. Um, where you can find the pain, what things you'll want to look for that are most common with this, um, different interventions for pre-op, post-op, during the surgery, and then um, the diet, how you, they can tolerate it, positions, etc. So that's how I studied for finals, both for this med surge exam as well as my mother baby. I just took study guides and the information that I'd used to study for previous exams and then use that on the final to, to study for final. And like I said, if there was a topic that I didn't really know or wasn't um, confident on, I went back in the book and I read those sections again. Um, another suggestion I have for you is that as you're proceeding through the quarter and you're going through the quarter, say um, you have an exam in week three, so you go and take the exam. Some schools might let you see what you got wrong. Some schools might not let you see at all. I would suggest after the exam going and sitting down and rethinking about the questions you got wrong or maybe the questions you weren't positive on and writing those topics down. So for me, I knew that the first exam, there were a lot of 
questions on peptic ulcers and we really hadn't touched on peptic ulcers she never really talked about them in class she really never like I just I wasn't prepared for those so I remember there was like seven questions on the first exam that I was kind of iffy on and I didn't really know and I guessed at a bunch of them and that one we weren't able to see what we got right or wrong so after that exam that was one of the topics I wrote down and what I did was I kept a list of those so that for the final I knew that these exams touched really hard on these topics and these are topics that maybe I need to go back and look on or really make sure I know um, and I found that was very helpful because some of the topics that were on previous exams were also on the final again. Um, and so I was able to answer those with a little more knowledge and clarity in that I know what this is asking and I know how to answer it, if that makes sense. Um, so that's really how I studied for finals. Um, there's not a lot of time generally between classes and then finals because it's such a fast-paced program. But you have to find what works for you. And for me, that just worked for me as if I kept organized from the get-go because it is a hard process. But if you get a system down where you're doing this, you're writing down topics on a piece of paper, you're keeping that paper in your binder or something, at the end it makes it so much easier because then you're not playing catch-up or having to go back and redo everything. I'm just taking everything I've had and, you know, making a focus review throughout the weeks and then when it comes to the final, I don't have to sit and make a focus review. I have it already. Um, if your teacher does by chance give you a printout of like a focus exam, maybe you can use that as your basis to go off of and take the information, copy it and paste it from other Word documents that you've made throughout the quarter and then make one final focus review on that information. But then you're not sitting there wasting time typing it out, spending that time when you could be using that time studying. So that's just kind of a a process you might be able to use when you're studying for your finals as well. Um, to anyone going through finals right now, I understand your stress. I've been there. I survived. Um, you can too. Just keep pushing. Keep keep going. Keep studying. Um, remember to take breaks because those brain breaks will be very helpful in retaining information. I also found something yesterday, I think it was, that was actually... We'll see. <laughs> um, saying I'll do it and actually doing it are two different things, but it said that taking a nap after you've studied something helps you retain the information better and you're able to recall it easier. Um, and I was talking to one of my friends, she's like, yeah, when I'm studying, if I'm, you know, stressed about something or I'm just not, I'm hitting a roadblock, I go and take like a 10 minute nap. And it's just that time for your brain to recharge and kind of be like, okay, I've had a break, I can get back in it. And she said a lot of times that when she does that, she goes back and she, it just comes quick to her, like it's sunk in or something or finally made sense. Or she's had that time to chill for a second and let her brain relax and get her bearings and then go back at it again. So maybe this last quarter because I know it's going to be stressful um, I'll try that and taking little brain breaks more frequently when I'm feeling myself get stressed and worked up rather than just working through it and staying aggravated or stressed or lots of tension um, so that's a hint to a bit I don't know take it or try it I may try it this quarter we'll let you know um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was ATIs our program at least does ATI examinations and I used to totally despise them um, but I've learned a little bit more to appreciate them and I, but I think that's because I've learned how to study for them and if you don't know what ATI is maybe your school does something else they do like HESI or Pearson or something like that but we have ATI exams, and we do proctored exams, so we had one the other day. And I just went online and took an assessment thing because, an assessment one, because we, um, I scored pretty well on my last one, so it didn't give me enough information that I could use to share with you guys. So I just went on earlier today and just took one for the fun of it, just clicked answers, um, mostly because I have other exams that I need to study for, and then this way I could kind of explain stuff to you. So I just went through and clicked a bunch of things and did really bad. I got a 58.3%. But I wanted to show you because when it prints out, mm, let me hide my name and information here. Okay, I'll just show you this. When it prints out, it prints out your 
your scores and then on the next page what you can do is if you go into your um, focus review you can make focus reviews or look at focus reviews so mine I went through and printed out and like I said I just went through and clicked things so it gave me a lot to focus on but it prints out or the next page has these little areas for you to focus on and this is a pharmacology one that I just quickly took this morning um, I didn't even really finish the exam which is horrible but I need to be focusing on the ones that they've already given us for quarter eight that we're supposed to complete there's something like 29 ATIs and Pearson's that we're supposed to do and get a certain score and I'm like well I want to focus on those rather than these and so but I wanted to do this to show you guys how I study for them and how I what helps me so anyhow the next page will have this like little focus review and what this does is it gives you I don't know if you can see that but it gives you an all-encompassing category on what you have so this one is substance use disorders treatment for cocaine toxicity and then here it tells you where you can find it it says the RN pharmacology book it's chapter 12 and so then what I do is I take this and I sit down and I go through one by one so this one says are in pharmacology tools. So I get my book, which if you don't have the hardback book, that's fine. They have it on their website. If you haven't found that, it's under your products and you have to go to the recent editions or whatever your school uses and they have electronic copies on there which you can pull up. So anyhow, this says that it's in chapter 12, so I'll go to chapter 12 and I'll either find that section in the chapter or I'll read the whole chapter if the whole chapter is about it. Um, it just depends. Some are bigger than others. Okay, so chapter 12 here is five pages. It's like this. And then what I do is I will read that section of the book. I will answer the questions in the back. And then I'll go to my focus review and try and remember from that proctored exam or whatever it is you're taking what that question was ask, asking to see if I can answer it now. And a lot of times just reading this and answering the questions that's obviously something maybe I didn't know on the exam that I need to focus on. So even just reading this chapter and answering the questions in the back is helpful to me. Um, and really, like, I do that for each one. I go through systematically and answer each question like that. And then when I'm done with that, if I don't feel like I really learned that much from going through my review, I will... Um, I will take that and then I will go into ATI program itself and they have practice assessments on there and I will answer those questions. Um, I know I've also showed you guys this before and I'll pull it up on my phone here real quick. I use this app here, this RN Mentor. It's um, done by ATI but you can go on here and make your own focused reviews for studying purposes so like um, you know the day before the exam I'll just go on here and I'll answer a bunch of questions so you're gonna I click new quiz and then you can go by category or random like it generates ones so I go by clinical area so let's say I'm going I know in a couple days I'm gonna go take a um, care of child ATI that I have to take so I'm gonna do it over my break and get it done and over with so it has sections here that you can just click or uncheck and it will ask you questions in that category. So I'm going to uncheck all of the ones except for care of child because that's what I want to focus on right now. Um, actually, let me do pharmacology since this study thing is pharmacology. We'll just stick with one topic. So I have pharmacology checked here and then I hit begin, begin quiz and it will ask me questions in regards to pharmacology. So I clicked 50 questions just to give. You can go up to 100 questions and then keep going. You can keep taking questions. So let me see if I can answer this. Okay, so I got this question correct. It doesn't matter if I got it correct or incorrect, it will show you. But it tells you green, it'll show up when you hit your next, that the question is right. And then at the top here, you can go and hit rationales. And it will tell you why each answer is wrong or why it is correct. And I read those because 
that will help me whether I got it right or wrong. Maybe I guessed and I didn't know. It'll help me better prepare for that content-wise on when I go to take the RN exam because this app is, or the ATI exam, because that app is run, made by ATI. Um, and so I do that. And generally, um, I do really well in the ATIs if I follow that system. Um, if I haven't previously taken an exam that gives me this printout, I'll go online and do the practice assessments. Your practice assessments online will also print out these ATI um, study tools, and you can get your focus review from that, and I'll use that to study for the proctored exam. Um, our school lets us take the proctored exam, and then we do a retake to try and get even higher than what we got. Or to get the score we need um, for our program, you need a level 2, which really generally isn't that, that hard. Um, so then when I'm going to do my retake and I want to score higher, if I'm shooting for a level 3 or a higher level 3 if I already got a level 3, or a higher level 2 if I got a level 2, I'll take this focus review and answer the questions that I didn't have, didn't know, and then I'll go and answer those questions. If I have not taken a proctored exam yet and I don't have a good focus review to go off of, generally what I do is I just block out how many chapters I need to read and I read the whole book. And it's answer all the questions. So for pharmacology, it has 48 chapters. So I would usually divide that into, you know, I have this many days until my exam. I'm going to do 10 chapters a day. Or um, if I know one day I have less homework, maybe I'm going to do 20 chapters or 30 chapters to get out of the way. And I just sit down. I read through the book. Anything that I think is super important or I don't know that I probably need to go over before I take the exam, I take notes on. And then I go through and answer the questions so that the night before the exam I can go through, read the handwritten notes I've taken, have a refresher, and then I just answer a bunch of questions. Um, and that's really how I study for the ATI. Um, that's what I find helpful. I find these focus reviews super helpful because these will tell you when you take in an exam or practice assessment online what you're lacking and where you may need help on and then that helps you study and get the information you maybe aren't as confident on or aren't as strong on and get stronger on that and at least maybe have more knowledge when it comes to answering the questions the next time. Um, so that's what I, how I study for the ATI. Again, find what works for you. It doesn't work for everyone, you know, everyone has different ways of studying. Um, so that's what I have. Um, yes, I'm on break, but like I said, there's no rest for the weary. Our quarter eight instructors had like an orientation with us two weeks before quarter seven got out and basically gave us this handout here with, um, I forget, it's like... A ridiculous amount. I made it into a chart here. Oh, here's this one. Gave us a ridiculous amount of ATI and Pearsons that we're supposed to do have completed over the break. There's like there's a couple duplicates, but there's easily like twenty nine or more assessments um, that we have to have completed by the start start of school. So that's really what I'm working on over the break. Um and just studying for those. Again, that's ATI and Pearson. So Pearson, I go through and try and answer the questions to the best of my ability. If I don't know a question, don't know an answer, I research the topic, I take notes, and then I try and answer the question, just going about it that way. Um, but I do tend to stick with these for the ATI exam. So it just depends what you're taking. Um, so over my break, I don't really get a break because I have all these assignments and stuff that are due that really aren't due until next quarter. However, we were highly, highly encouraged to get as many of them done over break as we can as it decreases all of our stress and tension that we will have next quarter because next quarter we'll have class days, we'll have test days, we'll have lab days, we'll have clinical days as well as halfway through we pick up preceptorship days. Um, and all of that's coming down the pipe and we don't know about it quite yet. So she highly recommended, and other students have recommended too, getting those done and out of the way over break so that you don't have to worry about them come classes starting up and everything. So that's kind of just my goal. Um, just focus on those over the break. Kind of try and relax, spend time with family that, while I can before I hit it hard for my last quarter. Um, that's really all I have for you guys today. I will update you more later. Um, I'll probably make a video again here soon before classes start with just any information I've gotten on my new classes as well as 
how I have found a study for these Pearson because I've been told by previous people that Pearson is a lot harder than ATI. I personally have never done any Pearson, but um, I'm going to try and figure out a system once I've logged on and seen how it works on ways that I can take these exams and do well on them while retaining information. So when I figure out what they're like and how um, I'm going to use them to study and stuff, I'll get back with you guys and let you know for anyone else who might be taking Pearson or struggling with Pearson or maybe who has heard of it and know it's coming but they don't know what it entails or whatever. Um, so once I get in there and I see that I will post a video for you guys. Um, I'm also thinking about doing a video with like my top five or ten must-have um, clinical items because I found that a lot of things people say they need I don't really use during clinical whereas other things I find like I need during clinical so if that's a good idea or if you want to see a um, video of my next you know top 10 must-haves for clinical or even top 10 for nursing school um, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know which one you would prefer, if you want both, or if that's something that's even interested to you guys. So I know kind of what videos to send your way that are going to be beneficial to you. Um, because if I can give you some kind of insight or some kind of help, then I've done what I've helped somebody, and that's what I care about. Um, these videos are really just to help anyone else who's struggling or may need some help or tidbits or information or something explained to them. If I can help somebody, then I feel like I've helped somebody, and that I I want to enjoy being able to help you um, making nursing school a little bit easier because nursing school is hard in general. There's just no way around it. It is hard, and. Um, Sometimes people find things that work for them, and maybe they work for others. So I'm just trying to share some knowledge and things that have worked for me that hopefully will work for somebody else who may be struggling in a certain area or something. So if that sounds good to you, um, let me know in the comments below, and I'll send you guys more videos here shortly as well as next quarter. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.